control and automation currently he is working on virtual laboratory project which is funded by mhrd he has wide experience of 34 years in teaching research and industry his responsibilities are he is dean student affairs principal investigator of virtual laboratory project he has published and presented number of papers in national and international journals and conferences he is member of ieee instrumentation and measurement society life member of instrument society of india life member of biomedical engineering society of india life member of indian society for technical education and his current projects are laboratory project mission education through ict mhrd sponsored nme ict project virtual laboratory and remote triggered laboratory consultant for pimpri chinswad municipal corporation for water treatment plant skada project now i would like to request agash sir to start his session once again welcome and thank you all over to you sir yeah good morning and uh, thank you for this introduction uh, i'll share my screen uh, one second I'll, let let me share the screen yeah okay uh, hope you can uh, see the screen and uh, the presentation okay can you see the screen and the presentation yeah it's visible sir okay and if at all in between if you feel that the quality of the voice is uh, not up to the mark uh, and if i am too fast please let me know all right okay. yeah all right okay uh, welcome to this wonderful world of uh, virtual laboratories uh, instead of just saying that virtual laboratories are very very useful uh, i have selected very specifically the title of my presentation not as a virtual lab but there is a special reference to virtual labs and the title is challenges in online learning and evaluation normally i do talk about challenges in online learning now i have added the evaluation also because this uh, pandemic has forced us to change the way we are teaching it has forced the students to change the way they are learning and it has forced the administration the way they are uh, administering students and teachers uh, thanks to professor mane uh, principal of uh, asms uh, iot now uh, is a good colleague of mine and we work together in coep also and uh, it's good that uh, your college has taken that this initiative and i am happy to share my experiences uh, because this uh, uh, virtual laboratory is the project started in 2009 and there were 12 institutions and i am very happy and proud to say that all these 12 institutions and the principal investigators started working in 2009 still they are working in phase 4 of virtual labs we are now working in phase 3 now soon we are proposing for phase 4 also so it's it's an experience of more than 10 years and we have learned a lot uh, because the day we started this uh, virtual laboratories uh, nobody was ready to believe us that something in education like virtual can be Uh, existent or can be useful most of the time it is being found that virtual laboratories are treated initially as the replacement of actual laboratory and right on day 1 the uh, main principal investigator the core principal investigator of this project uh, professor ranjan bose from uh, iit delhi kept on saying and we all kept on saying that this is not a replacement this is a complement to the learning because students are there with you for 8 hours only in a day 16 hours of the time which the students are spending are not really connected with you the time at which you close the doors of the laboratory you cut off the students from the laboratory and still industries in and around keep on insisting that if the students are not up to the mark this is the responsibility of the educational institutions 
and there are many surveys uh, uh, many uh, webinars and many presentations and seminars and conferences where as a teacher we were blamed that 80% of your students are not ready to be recruited are not eligible even to recruit though they have degree in engineering now frankly speaking as a teacher we get pain i'm not calling this as a criticize but then we have to look at what's happening actually something which is in my control i can do something but something which is not in my control and my faculty colleagues control how can somebody expect that we should do miracle and that's where we started uh, thinking about how to deal with this situation because uh, whenever somebody says that i want to deal with this situation i need to know actually what is in my hand and that's where we said eight hours contact hours with students is not sufficient and that is where the question started if you want to extend those contact hours then you will have to stress my teaching community and my teaching community is already stressed because this is a noble uh, profession uh, worldwide it is called as a noble profession where most of the time you have to keep on thinking about how to deliver the lecture what new can be added how students will get learn and at the back of the mind of every teacher and i'm sure about this at the back of the mind of every teacher every time this thought keeps on wandering saying that how can i do better how can i do better and that's where the main thing came in existence can technology help us because physically we can't be there we just can't be there in the campus or connected with the students all the time that's not possible so how to take help of this and that's where we found and that's where i keep on always saying that the technology is being least used in technical institutions though we are developing or we are uh, producing students those who are developing uh, sunrise technologies we are really not using technologies on the campus and that's why we all have to gear up i'm not saying thanks to pandemic the corona covid 19 which forced us to now think how to run these colleges it has forced us and all the administrations regulatory authorities teachers and the students and the parents everybody who is associated with this because our future is getting associated with this and that's where i'm sure these virtual labs are going to help you a lot i'm going to explain you my experiences first maybe for uh, uh, first 15 20 minutes and then i'll switch on to the demonstration of virtual labs Uh, because whenever when we developed virtual labs we found <coughs> sorry typically we found that when there is unsupervised learning taking place we are not sure actually we are not clear about how that unsupervised learning takes place and that's where the first challenge came in front of us is there is no eye to eye contact and we are being trained our brain is being mapped that unless and until we look at the eyes of the students get inspiration from those uh, eyes with enthusiasm so something is being understood something is not being understood something needs to be um, uh, retrained reset so many things and then we take advantage of that and that's that's what is exactly missing in this world of online now why it is missing because we have some technical issues now all my students can't put on their uh, videos on because there is a network limitation bandwidth limitation all the students cannot participate consistently because sometimes network is there sometimes network is not there and to my surprise this semester after the lockdown when we conducted at coep the online lectures we found that students from remote areas students from villages or students from even uh, the district and taluka places where there is a power cut for 8 hours now this is the ground reality with which we all have to survive you can't change that in a day as a teacher we have to take that as a challenge 
So there is no eye to eye contact. The technology says just switch on your camera. There is an eye to eye contact. But the moment I switch on camera, I have another problem. And that's where the second thing which came in the uh, as an experience is the adaptability issue. Because the same thing happens with the students. We are in front of whenever we conducted classes in physical classes. We used to just move around the class, talk to students in between, crack a joke, ask them what's going on. So many things happen, and that's the interactions, the live interaction. And in such an environment, the environment which we are talking about, there is no live interaction. So there are adaptability issues as far as even students are concerned, because they are sitting at a location where that is not conducive for learning. Please. Be aware of this fact of life that there are many students, those who are living in uh, one room kitchen or even in hut mains actually, and that's what is happening where there is a lot of a lot of noise all around. Students are sitting somewhere. Sufficient light is not there. Connectivity is not there. Mobile is not latest. So many things are happening, and that's where unless and until a teacher. And the student has the self motivation. The things are not going to change. Things are absolutely not going to change because the continuity in the teaching has to reach whenever he is learning. Suppose my voice is breaking. You you will never enjoy my lecture. Even if I wish to give you so many so many so many thoughtful and. Uh, the experiences which we all have gathered, gathered as a consortium of virtual labs, probably you may not like it also. And that's where we need to change the module of teaching. What is inappropriate module of teaching means? Chalk and talk is not what we should do. At the same time, I must say this because now college has started taking decision. That we will convert everything into online lectures, and unfortunately, unfortunately, unlike our classroom, a student cannot concentrate in an online class for more than fifteen minutes. Believe me, that's that's what is the experience which I personally gathered and my colleagues around me gathered. and that's where continuously one other other like the classes are going on in a regular college colleges are planning to conduct their lectures like this i think this is uh, this is unfair as far as the students are concerned we have to change this but if because all the time it is expected that student will or are ready to learn administration is saying that if yes there is a time table and you just go as if you are going in the classroom and conduct the lecture but if the efficiency of my teaching and the learning process is not up to the mark then what is the fun will i take in teaching online so we have to change our mode of uh, and the module of teaching and then that is where training is highly essential because we are not being trained to stand in front of a camera we become cautious no doubt about it i felt it initially slowly i gathered the courage and now whenever my my camera is on uh, my facial expressions i i'm not sure but remains the way it remained in my uh, class and and that's where we all have to understand that we need cer- certain type of training not only we but the students need training how to use that technology the parents need training that whenever the classes are going on the noise has to be reduced it's it's a social responsibility nowadays because you have converted the students house into a college room a classroom and you have to maintain the sanctity of that classroom it is being it has to be told to the parents it has to be told to the students and we have to as a teaching community we have to take care of that and these are the challenges based on that we need to change our focus and we need to change our approach what should be the approach then i personally feel and this is what is the experience which i gathered in last 10 years because we were granted autonomy in 2004 and truly we become autonomous and in true spirit 
not only college became autonomous even teachers became autonomous in coep and we were told to experiment and our students and i'm i'm very thankful to all my students those who participated in those experiments as guinea pigs because nobody was knowing actually what's going on what is this problem based learning what is open book examination what is an examination where students are supposed to talk to each other what is the examination where mobile phones are allowed you may be surprised but these type of experiences and this type of experiments when we conducted we found and this is my personal opinion also that examination is also one way to learn examination is not only to pass or fail a student but to give him and him or her an opportunity to learn in a different environment a collaborative environment and that's the reason we have to have problem based learning where the problems associated with the industry real life problems must be discussed in the class so as to increase the engagement of a student in a classroom how do i how do i engage that students it's very very difficult because my dear friends you must have experience in your own classrooms physical classrooms the backbenchers were doing something else and i'm sure this must have happened now everybody is a backbencher you can't see the faces you can't see what's happening and the camera control is in the student's hand the mic is in student's hand what you have is give on keep on giving lectures that's not the right way to do it so you have to ensure that students are engaged students are attentive and that's where change the format of teaching like problem based learning divide challenging assignments make sure that there is consistency in those assignments but at the same time and that's why i have deliberately added evaluation framework because there has to be confidence in our system by the student saying that i am sincerely attending these online classes and the virtual laboratories and i am being assessed accordingly so my evaluation framework and the evaluation i now started calling it as an assessment i'll come back to this point once again but in this case what has happened is that person independent evaluation system has to be nurtured and the message has to go to all the students that if this is not right this is not right this is wrong means this is wrong and accordingly he or she must be assessed and that's why online monitoring of the learning has to take place all put together we need involvement of faculty members because the sharing of experiences would help us a lot truly speaking help us a lot as far as the uh, quality of teaching is concerned coming to the laboratory related things we have started talking about outcome based learning outcome based education obe model we have uh, adopted and many a colleges now are going for nba and then they have to produce the college and the teachers must produce a report saying that how much is the attainment of a student unless and until we track all the activities which can contribute to attainment you cannot have 360 degrees attainment matrix in front of you as far as a student is concerned and that's where when i say that you have to do these many things believe me you have only 24 hours in a day you have two hands only you have single brain you have two ears you have one mouth and that's it the god has not given you more than this and still the expectations are you have to do all those things my dear faculty college please remember nobody than technology will come to our rescue we have to change and we have to make sure that the use of technology has to be enhanced in our regular teaching whether it is online or offline we have to ensure otherwise most of your time will go in assessing the answer sheets of 120 students 80 students most of your time will go on getting frustrated looking at the handwriting of a student most of the time 
you will get frustrated because of the way the answer is being presented by students so many things will happen and that's the reason we have to nurture that habit that which technology can help me so that i'll be comfortable and i'll concentrate on assessment only please keep it in mind teachers are not clerks these are not technical clerks so we need to understand this if i spend a minute like a clerk i will lose 10 minutes as a teacher i will lose 10 minutes of my interaction with my students and slowly what happens and this is exactly what has happened in the education system of our country most of the faculty members have started believing that they are clerks i'm sorry to say but i'm blunt in saying this statement please stop this carrying the label of a clerk we are not clerks and that's where we have to remain as a faculty so whatever clerical i'm not undermining the clerical job but whatever is the job which is being assigned to me as a teacher i have to deliver that and most of the work which can be done which is a low level work as far as the intellectual capabilities are concerned has to be given to technology and that's where on uh, you have to prepare a question bank you have to ensure that online certification can be a certain and the last point which is very very important you need to know actually what is the pace of a learning of a student and if you keep on concentrating on somebody who is learning fast you will never know what will happen to those last 10 20% students those who have not learned anything i'm sorry to say but our focus has to be the moderation has to be make sure that we are supporting the last 30% at the same time we will not demoralize first 30% remaining 40% will keep on working because they are anyway get, getting driven by either this side or that side like a sandwich but my philosophy is first 30% you have to just give them a push for last 30% hand holding is mandatory how can i have that hand holding unless and until i extend my college timing and that's where i am saying whenever i propose that i'm extending my college timing i'm extending that not physically but virtually and that's what has to happen and that's what we have practiced and that's how i am giving you the experiences now this is where i just added this evaluation framework where basis for a gradation is to be known to everybody i'm talking about all the colleges which are autonomous but at the same time colleges those who are affiliated with university the examination system in the board of examinations most of our faculty members are sitting there why can't we sit together and decide that this is what we should in uh, include in of course we normally do that but at the same time how that gradation has to happen how to record all the activities of an individual and i kept on saying since 2005 that i want not a grade report of a student but i want a blueprint of a student and the basic difference between a blueprint and a grade report grade report tells me that this student is 8.5 cgp this student is 6.5 cgp this student is 7.9 cgp rather than that i don't get any feel what that student is all about and that is where even industries are saying that our recruitment process is not effective most of the time students interest is something different and he is getting selected in some other company and that's why maybe because of the pressure as far as the recruitment is concerned or getting selected is concerned students are accepting those jobs and then there is a frustration afterwards how to reduce that frustration we have to ensure that this student is 6.8 cgpa participated in these many activities technical activities these many and all the records must be there so that people will start believing that this is the blueprint and whenever x or y student is being assessed or interviewed by the panel of interviewers they'll say oh this is what it is and then the bar stick which we are using 
for the assessment like CGPA is no more a valid matchstick. Let's understand that. So we need to have evaluation versus assessment. There is nothing called as evaluation actually. Who are we to evaluate as such? Because we are evaluating only, we are evaluating only as far as the rote learning is concerned, memorization is concerned. Because in out of this uh, Bloom's taxonomy, uh, first three levels and maximum three and a half levels we are testing, remaining levels are remain unchanged. Then the question will come, how can we become Atmanirbhar? If our students, if our engineers fail to think, they will never create new products. They will never create new jobs. They will ne never create new, uh, maybe, uh, uh, probabilities for better design and they will become slaves. And that's what is happening exactly. Why? Why? We are calling ourselves as software giant, but not a single platform is owned by Indians. Why? Why? Why this is there? And the simple thing is, somebody is putting efforts there and we take pride. I'm sorry, but we take pride in saying that I'm using this platform because I'm a user of that platform. I'm not a creator of that platform. That's what is happening. And that's why we need to map the competencies. And we should say that, oh, if I certify this student, I'm using word I, please understand. On behalf of education system, I certify that this student possesses these, these, these competencies. I guarantee for that. And that's what is required. Then non-proctored examination, how do I conduct? Because we have fear in mind. We are working on the belief that the students are going to cheat me. They're going to copy. So we start policing on the students. Ultimately, what happens, the entire education system, evaluation system, getting converted into chore police. And that's what is exactly happening. We are neither police, neither students are chore. Now, they are not there to uh, uh, betray us. We are not there to betray. Now, that's what that faith-related system has to be developed because ultimately we have to ensure that and that message has to go loud and clear to all the students that whatever we are doing on the campus, of the campus, is for your betterment. It is for your future, not for me. It is for the nation. Let's do that. And that's the reason the last word will come. Then the satisfaction for all would come. Otherwise, there is a blame game which, which is going on. And the respect of teaching community is going down day by day. And that's the reason my uh, slide related to this online evaluation. And I wish that you should read that blog of uh, Dr. Saxena from AICT. Uh, a very good blog. I've given the uh, link of that blog. Our current evaluation system is basically from three lower levels, focusing on this, remembering, understanding, applying, some part of analyzing, some part. But as far as evaluation and creation is concerned, I'm sorry to say we are not testing, even we are not training them that are they in a position to evaluate a particular system? Are they in a position to create something? which is not happening, and that's the sad story of Indian education system in general, but engineering education system in particular. Now I'm going to uh, give you a demonstration. I'm going to give you a demonstration how to use virtual labs, because it's a firm belief of everybody in engineering education system even as a faculty member, that laboratories are backbones of engineering education. Mathematics is a language of engineering or drawing is a language of engineering. Similarly, backbone of engineering education is laboratory. In last decade, maybe one, one and a half decade, I must say, we have totally neglected, we have totally neglected the laboratory component. Most of the time, whenever there is a curriculum revision is there, and I used to sit in those uh, meetings also, 
I found that more and more uh, focus is towards reducing the lab because you need to invest in the lab, you have to maintain the labs. So many problems are there and you will find the percentage or the weightage of laboratory component is decreasing day by day. And then what has come? It has come that you go for summer internship, non-supervised, nobody knows what's happening there. You go for winter internship, you go for a mini project. It's, it's definitely not a good idea, definitely not a good idea to reduce laboratory and add these. In fact, mini project must be based on every laboratory. At the end of the last experiment of every laboratory must be integration of whatever sensors. For example, I'm just taking an example because I'm from instrumentation and control background. Uh, if I have studied the sensors, all the sensor temperature, flow, level, pressure sensors I've studied, I practiced, I perform experiments, I drawn the characteristics, I calibrated them, I maintained them. The last experiment should be integration. So there is a system given which is a real life system wherein that's the experiment which I'm going to demonstrate you, which is called as remote triggered experiment on boiler, wherein now I have a boiler, you find out what type of flow meter you will use here, what type of level measurement technique you can use here, pressure measurement and te temperature measurement systems you can use here. That should be the last experiment and it should be given more weightage and more time for students to understand which is not happening. We complete the experiments because we have a mandate to complete the experiments. I'm sorry, but we have to ensure that the flipped classroom which people kept on talking but I said, why not flip laboratories? Student will come with preparation before the lab, before that particular experiment. Why not? Virtual labs is a wonderful tool which can be used so elegantly that a student must learn and then come for this. Otherwise, we will waste our time, very precious time of a teacher, an experienced teacher, for example, an experienced teacher of 10 years, is talking about something which is very, very elementary. Very elementary, in my opinion, something which is already available, published, need not be taught. If it is available, there has to be discussion on what is available and what portion is not being understood by the students. It is absolutely a wrong practice to copy a presentation from somewhere and just run the presentation in a class, a student also can get that presentation. One of the days where the only source for learning is reference books and the most of the time the reference books were used to be there with the professors. So there is no access to that material. So it becomes very, very valid that the teacher must read all those things and then in, inform and teach the students in a simpler and a language. Now the things have so simple that we have to, and I'm making a bold statement, we have to reduce teaching and students must enhance learning. That has to happen. Going in a class for one hour and keep on teaching is not a right practice. And that's what we have to change. We have to change unless and until we change, we are not going to survive. Please keep it in mind something which is already available. If industry started believing that whatever is available openly and somebody is certifying and I can test and if he can or he or she can deliver that job, why should I demand for a certificate? And if at all certificate is required, there are certifying agencies, then why colleges are required? These questions would keep on coming and please understand those questions. And this is the... Uh, wake up call for all my faculty fraternity that please wake up and change the way we are conducting teaching learning process. It has to be effective because wasting even a student once he has admitted, he or she has admitted in engineering education is a big waste for the nation and we need to understand this. So I appeal to all my colleagues, please look at the blog, please look at what exactly the difference between evaluation and assessment. How do we want to do it? And that's where 
and now i'm moving towards the virtual laboratories which we developed and we learn from our mistakes and i i am i'm very open to say that we made many mistakes actually as a teacher as a developer as a lab assessor we made many mistakes what are the mistakes we never understood that the ground reality is different than what we are thinking initially we said okay let's develop the lab put it on server let everybody use them on server but then we realize i'm sorry our students won't have access our colleges and many colleges they say that okay whenever students are there on the campus why should they use internet and block the bandwidth why should i pay for it and that's where you will find there are two modes in which we are running those virtual labs and this is exclusively an experiment of college of engineering pune wherein we said okay we have an intranet mode wherein a small server would be set up in the college and without internet in house the students can use without the bandwidth that means whenever that network is down still students can access those laboratories through internet mode whenever they go out of the campus they can use internet but the another question or the another lesson we learn is basically related to how do i how do i really assess whether a student has learned that or not that means i have to keep on assessing the student i have to keep on engaging the students in my lab and that's where we thought of developing labs like uh, maybe a game because uh, you must have noticed that students take pride in saying that i am at so and so level of this game video game i am at 120 somebody say that oh i am at 170 so it, it it's a pride for the students so can we have something which can be created like a pride for the students is it possible and that's where we said okay let's develop the lab and i am very happy to say that all our labs are developed in open source no licensing software is being used for any of our labs that was the mandate also given by the central government mhrd new delhi that licensing should not be an issue otherwise somebody will start uh, arm twisting us afterwards let's not do that at the cost of the students and that's where all our labs are open source labs no money is required no fees it's free of cost because it's a project funded by central government and we are custodian of that project and that's the reason nobody is charging anything for these laboratories these are free of cost laboratories then we realize that most of our faculty members are busy in preparing a report of copo mapping whether it is attained or not giving reasons why not and preparing lot of data and at the end of the day what happens to that data is is a mystery so we said that okay can we automate that so in the laboratory we have copo mapping also most of the time we have found as an assessor also that laboratories are neglected component copo mapping is just being demonstrated not really practice but if you practice it you will find the students will gain confidence that oh this thing you can't do it actually you have to do it again why not to repeat that experiment and that's what has to happen so there are lab and analytics and copo mapping and assessment we need of course your support because uh, the framework is being given it is up to you to decide how to use that framework so you have to create the question bank you have to create and write what is copo mapping and internally you can conduct the examination even for every experiment you can have an uh, examination assessment why to write 10 out of 9 and sometime 8 sometime 7 and sometime 9 randomly instead of that let there be a scientific process of doing it nobody can uh, point a finger towards us saying that no this is not being done properly why when there is a technology available let me use that technology i will go on enriching my question bank that's my contribution instead of assessing number of question papers answer sheets my contribution should be intellectual contribution than a clerical contribution i'm using this word again and again because i feel embarrassed 
that if a faculty member is all the time keeping the records and maintaining the data without knowing anything. So let computer work for us. He is our slave. We are not the slave of the computer. Please let us not use the computer as a typewriter. Let us not use only uh, Microsoft Office. Let's use some other professional softwares also. Unless and until we get time to do it, that means we need relief from these data and analytics and everything. Let system does that. Let's do that. And then we realize that just by only simulating the labs, students will never get a feel of the laboratory. So we developed the remote triggered laboratories. All 13 plants which are being installed in College of Engineering, Pune Instrumentation and Control Department, can be accessed by any student of this country by booking the slot. And for that slot timing, for example, two hours or one hour, the entire plant is in the custody of a student. You can play with the plant, you can run the plant, do whatever you wish to, and we give challenge. Even if you wish, you can damage our systems. All the protections are being given nationwide you can access these plants and I'm going to demonstrate you that plan. And then in phase three, we are specifically working on online question bank creation and the analytics. And now I'll go for the demonstration of the virtual laboratories. Uh, I hope uh, there are no questions from your side. If at all there are questions, uh, please uh, keep on sending those questions to the organizers. Um, I hope at the end of uh, the session, uh, we, will, we will take care of all these questions. Now, what I'm going to do is, if you go and if you want to use these uh, uh, laboratories from College of Engineering Pune, what you need to do is go to portal.coepvlab.ac.in and you will find these five icons. And that's what is the contribution of virtual laboratory group at COEP to all the colleges. Like there is a virtual terminal unit called as VTU. It is basically for remote triggered laboratories. The second is virtual lab simulation internet, means my students can access this from anywhere. Intranet, in-house. Then we have our master uh, laboratories, all 120 laboratories, around 1200 experiments at one place, like vlab.co.in, without this additional feature like analytics, data storage, usage patterns, COPO mapping, question bank, everything if you don't want, you can directly go to vlab.co.in and use those labs from there. And there is another exercise which we do under this banner called as Intake Olympiad. It's basically uh, strengthening the thought process. The entire process of problem solving has to be nurtured right from the beginning. And one are the days where electrical engineer will work in isolation, mechanical engineer will work in isolation. It's not going to happen. We have to break those barriers. The watertight compartments which we created in engineering in the form of departments, now the time has come to close these compartments, break these compartments, so that interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary team will come together. So this Intake Olympiad is basically our yearly event. This is the sixth year which we have launched. Uh, we will be, of course, I'm sorry, we will be launching in the month of July. But at present, there's an online internship going on. And uh, selected students are working on two months online internship as a summer internship uh, with many companies. And they are solving their problem statements. Our focus in that is to ensure that students are thinking. Students are not just coding. Please understand the difference between thinking of a solution and delivering a solution. If you jump on delivering a solution, probably you become a slave. But if you think and then deliver, you become master. Now it is up to us to decide whether to uh, ask our students to become master or to become slave. Choice is up to us. <laughs> Now, if you go to our uh, laboratory, you will find <coughs> this is the homepage of uh, any nodal center of College of Engineering Pune, wherein the nodal coordinator can access 
Now, this is the uh, overall access or the overall uh, usage of the laboratories under COEP, but all the labs, uh, labs developed by IIT Bombay, IIT Delhi, IIT Guwahati, IIT Kanpur, and IIT Kharagpur, and uh, uh, Rurki, uh, NIT Suratkal, <coughs> Amruta University, Triple IIT Hyderabad, these are all our partners, or Dialwa University. These are 12 partners. And we all are together and we have developed this lab. At this, you will find since the inception, like uh, we have started gathering this information from 2014, around 30,000 hours of the lab is being used and more than 1,14,000 hits were there. But these are only through nodal centers. Please understand, we have around 50 nodal centers uh, in the western region of the country. And if you, as an individual, as a teacher, you want to utilize these labs, how can I, how can I say that whether the involvement of a student is there or not? You have to give them an assignment and say, yes, I'm going to explain you that. For example, uh, automation is going to become a very, very vital business because after this pandemic, everybody will start thinking that I don't want any disruption in the production, in the manufacturing, even if the workers are not there. So automation is bound to come. And if you want to support that automation, we need to generate those engineers which have acumen towards automation. And one of the lab which I, I wish to, uh, of course, uh, show you is uh, related to programmable logic control, PLC lab. Now in that PLC lab, if suppose I want the student to practice, I can't keep on checking whether he has practiced or not out just by asking few questions. I just can't ensure that he has learned. Now, how do I, how do I start working on that? The only way to do it, the only way to do it is ensure that offline, whenever he is working, it is being recorded. So you can check the record of individual student, how many minutes, how many hours he has worked on that experiment. And you may give him a target or that student a target that before coming to the next practical, you should go to virtual labs, practice there, minimum two hours, you should practice on your own. And the beauty of this is whenever you find time, now that is very, very important. Whenever you find time means, whenever you find time means it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory that a student, student should work only in the college. Whenever he feels maybe in 12 in the night, he feels that, okay, let me, let me, I have time and let me enjoy the laboratory. So there is no ban on the timing. 24 by 7, the labs are available. And the technology is such that whenever a student logs in, whenever and whatever he does, everything is getting recorded at the back end. And then you can get a report saying that whether he has really used the lab effectively or not, or he was just sitting there. So let's let's try let's start using those labs in that fashion. Please, my advice to all of you is: do not do not use these laboratories as just a supplement because some regulatory authorities are sending you instructions whether you are using virtual labs or not. It would be unfair to all my faculty colleagues and my professors who relentlessly worked work for last 11 years to develop these laboratories if they are not used properly. Uh, I'll, I'll just go through this one by one and I'll show you what's happening there and how to use these laboratories. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay. So uh, if I want to use these labs, what I can do is uh, I'll, uh, there will be a username and password if you are a nodal center. If you are not a nodal center and you want to use this, uh, these laboratories, you can simply go to vlab.co.in and start using those labs. I'll just put in and just see how it works. So this is the laboratory. Uh, can you see this laboratory? For example, now I wish to go in uh, electrical because that's my domain where we have developed the laboratory. So you will find all the labs like sensor modeling, industrial automation machine, PLC, industrial electrical drives and electrical machines lab, even ergonomics, uh, creative design and analog signals lab, 
all labs are available to you and i'm just selecting one lab which is called as programmable logic controller lab and now i am saying that yes this lab is developed in such a fashion that after confirming this your logical thinking process gets refined you learn on your own and please be assured and please advise all your students that whatever material is available in the lab is sufficient for you to learn on your own so these labs are to be used as self learning laboratory literally self learning laboratories no supervision is required no help is required student must learn these labs on its own maybe peer learning would happen and even if a student stuck in between he or she can of course contact us but i don't think that uh, day will come where you need to contact us so there are objectives theory procedure review questions assignments references everything is there so after reading the theory we expect that the student would read theory then he will go and read procedure after reading the procedure then he will go and start the simulator right so that's what has to happen so when you once you start the simulator from here this is your domain actually right so now i'll just uh, introduce you to this lab and the reason why i'm asking you to get acquainted well acquainted to this lab and you can practice with other labs also this is just a demonstration of one lab but what we want basically is uh we want that a student should use these laboratories your job as a faculty is to devise challenging assignments now whenever i say challenging assignments these assignments are basically non googleable assignments something which cannot be searched easily on the net and that's where i call this as non googleable labs or non googleable assignments please give them assignments and use your time in developing challenging assignments instead of assessing those answer sheets let that system does that job let that system understand that whether it is solved or not correctly you have an online examination system also and it is already part of our virtual laboratories for example if i go and create a ladder program here and i say that yes this is what i want uh i'm just taking one example for simplicity and i'm saying that okay this has to be tagged first and this is exactly as per the uh, standard of an industry so if a student goes in industry and wants to work in automation this is exactly the way which he or she has to work there is no other way for example i want to use it uh, on delay timer so i'll say that okay i have added this then i have added this initialization pulse and then i go to a timer and i just put a timer here okay and then i configure that timer the timer label which i can give you is for example key on and the preset value means the time after the timer would because it's uh, i'll put it as a 10000 milliseconds because it is in milliseconds and to initiate this i call this as out okay that means my logic says that if somebody has switched on this test push button or press this push button the timer should start and after the timer has done its timing now what else we expect from it we want that some motor should get switched on and this is the motor yeah if i make a mistake it will be indicated to me that you are making a mistake one second i'll just check what is the mistake so the mistake is i have to put this output at this position only so this is also part of the software so that software takes care that it indicates to you saying that please don't make this mistake otherwise it will not work for example this is called as a done beat of uh, the timer and this is how the motor would start so i'll say that okay this is motor so my example is as an operator i will come i will press this button i will initiate some bit after the initiation is there the timer will start and when i leave from that place safely now the real time example is 
suppose a machine is making too much noise and it is against the safety norm instead of wearing those uh, ear protectors and everything i will put a system wherein i go out or suppose there is an explosion system which i want to fire i have to go out maybe at a distance and do certain things these are all industrial examples expectations from industry and such examples you can give the students and then i will compile this program if there is any mistake it would be notified that yes but now it is saying that it is compiled successfully and then i'll run the system now what i can do is i'll just toggle this just look at this now this has started then continuously but this is not on because now your operator would go and then after that this would happen now just see what has happened now i said that this should work but this has not worked okay now you need to find out what is wrong now i i am learning and i will find yes this i press so this has become on this has become on so this has become on so the timer has become on but the timer done bit is on means my timer is working but this is not working so i come here and say that oh i'm sorry i made a mistake here so i have to go back in the development mode i will go to here and give the tag here and i say that oh i'm sorry i made a mistake and then i submit it again i compile this program again i run the program and then i say that okay let's see what happens okay now it is reference with output cannot be toggled so let's see what's happening he is saying that i'm i'm doing the wrong thing so there is there is an indication to me that you can't do like this so i toggled just look at this now let's see whether it works or not otherwise i have to keep on tracking and this is the learning actually this is exactly the learning which has to happen oh great so this has happened after done bit this has become on and then this has become on so till the time my operator is out he has gone because he has given me a command and he has gone out and that's what has happened now the point here is how do i how do i change this statement i probably will say that yes you look at this this has remained on only so i want that as a only a uh, maybe a, not a toggle switch but a push button so the next assignment would be the operator would be using a push button instead of toggle switch no new assignment there is no way a st other student can copy because you have changed smartly so naturally what needs to be done is you have to change this entire logic and then what will happen a student will learn through his mistakes he will learn on its own you don't have to you don't have to ensure that whether he is copying or not most of our time as a teacher is being spent on whether who has copied whose it should not happen because that is that is also a fear in our mind as a teacher that it should not happen that somebody who has copied and is getting more marks than the original paper now it becomes a job of a police let's not get engaged in the job of a police let's get engaged in an intellectual uh, delivery of uh, the thought process or the knowledge to students so give give them freedom i always say because these are our experiments and i conducted in last 5 years i usually conduct open book test and uh, the test of the examination is for 8 hours not for 3 hours actually and most of my in fact i'm very happy that all my students enjoy those examinations because there is a learning which is happening it's it's not a fear in mind whether i will fail i have not memorized a day before now what is important and what is challenging to a teacher in such an exercise is you have to devise the challenging assignments so that student will get a clear message right in the beginning that you will spend lot of time in searching you will not get anything better start thinking if you start thinking without searching you will get an answer otherwise you will waste your time in just searching because the question is posed in a fashion where there is no direct answer on search engine there is no direct answer so you will waste your time
So then what will happen is then he'll start thinking and that's the process which we expect a student to learn. I hope uh, similarly you can use these laboratories. Sorry, I'll just check uh, which lab. Okay. So I'm, I'm looking at this lab. And then when I am I'm done with this, I go back to the development mode and I, I can simply close this browser. And now the moment I close this browser, uh, this browser, what happens basically, I come back here, but at the back end, my time is being recorded. In our phase three and phase four experiments, you will find not only the time, but all the events are being recorded. Everything what you do is being recorded. If you do a wrong thing is being recorded, then how do you change it? Is, is it uh, a trial and error method or some systematic analysis of the previous fault and then you change? Everything is being recorded. All the graphs are recorded. No two graphs would be same. And uh, because I am from the generation where the laboratory journals are being copied from batch to batch and that to years together. There is no change in the observation table. There is no change in the conclusion. All the students have same conclusion. All the students have same observation table. I'm from that era, unfortunately. But in those days, there were other, uh, of course, I have due respect to my teachers because they uh, have not uh, uh, access to the tools which we are using now. But in that also, they gave me very challenging assignments. So getting uh, a clue from that, we developed the laboratory where whenever you are characterizing this or calibrating a transmitter, every transmitter will give you as if it is a new transmitter. So no two students will have same example or similar results. <coughs> so there is no scope for copying. And that's what we have to do, actually. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so this is about virtual lab. And this is how you can use virtual lab. So then there are review questions. There are assignments also. So this is the assignment. And there are many more assignments. There are reference books given. You can give a feedback to us. And these are the people who have developed this lab. So there is everything is available. Similarly, you can have all these labs listed here. And I request all my uh, teaching fraternity to use this laboratory in such a fashion, in such a fashion that you will inculcate that habit of self-learning. Why students should be dependent on a teacher? Need not be. Need not be dependent on uh, a teacher because our job is of a facilitator. So only handholding is required. A mere handholding can play a role which can change his or her life. And that's what we want, actually. And my appeal to most of my colleagues sitting here is, now this is the uh, uh, new uh, framework which we are creating. And you will find here, whenever you are creating a question bank, I'll just check. So whenever you are creating a question bank, uh, uh, because I don't have access to that upload question, but whenever you are creating that, what you will find here, is you can write CO and PO. So develop your question bank, conduct those examinations. And there is always, and this is what was the feedback given to us, only MCQs, multiple choice questions, won't serve the purpose as far as assessment is concerned or evaluation is concerned. Taking a clue from that, we have a question bank where you can have multiple choice questions, Match the pair, fill in the blanks, true or false, multiple correct question, multiple wrong questions, audio based question, video based question, paragraph based question, and formula based question. So randomly that formula will get changed and the uh, question itself will get changed. All these type of questions you can put in. It is up to us to now decide how to utilize this facility to enhance engineering education. Gone are the days where we were having ample time for assessment of papers. 
most of the time this should happen without even knowing why to create that fearful atmosphere and the on the campus of examination why to create that examination should be uh, happening all the time at the background examination is happening and the students are not knowing but unknowingly also whenever they miss get mistake the system through you of course through teachers will prompt the students saying that oh you are not doing well here there are mistakes these things you have learned but according to me you have not learned fully according to me my logic says or the assessment says you have done this competency up to 60% you have to elevate that if you are happy with 60% that's not a choice for you you have to elevate that and that has to be a system driven because a student a teacher cannot remember all those things because we have lot many things to do why are we wasting our time in those things which a machine can do and that's the thought ch process change it's called as a radical change in our thought process where i will spend my time in all those things where intellect is required to be worked brain is required to be used properly i will not use my uh, other skills like entering the data assessing the data evaluating the data analyzing the data let that system does that and slowly what will happen as a community we will evolve to the next level wherein we all will know how a student a particular student i'm not saying a class at present our resolution is a class our resolution is a class not a student right so we have to now move on towards the resolution as individual student whether he is learning or not if he is not learning what's happening instead of saying or instead of failing him saying that no you are not up to the mark why can't we why can't we correct system in between what's wrong is it possible let's start doing that let's have a change this pandemic has given us a wonderful opportunity and i must say that a wonderful opportunity to change education system which is there for so many years many researchers have shown the traits or the threats i must say to our education system because it is being devised and developed and designed with some other aspect with some other agenda we need to change that agenda and the agenda should be we want to create masters we don't want to create slaves how can i do that use such tools use such technologies use such mindsets and uh, like minded people to come together and form a group saying that oh, we will change in this particular domain we want to change because world is expecting us to change please keep it in mind it would be a very very fearful day for any teacher that at the end of fourth year a student is vacating the campus going out of the campus without any opportunity to work i think this is the miserable situation a teacher can come across with and i i'm sure as a teacher it pinches now how do i change that the only way to change is there are ample opportunities available we need to tap them and accordingly place our students there so that everybody will get a chance to serve at least and that's what is the basic thing the basic motto of all of us here developing the virtual laboratories developing new systems of learning developing how students are learning or knowing what is good in teaching learning process and what is bad in teaching learning process all those things and all those thoughts put together is the consortium is the virtual laboratories we are working on education systems to develop those education systems and that's where i'm going to explain you and i'm going to demonstrate you uh, quickly with help of my colleague amod uh, i'm going to demonstrate you the remote triggered virtual laboratory remote triggered laboratory part of virtual lab just give me a second yes in this uh, remote triggered laboratory uh, what is that 
uh, you can help me. The thought I will uh, explain you and Amod would demonstrate the remote triggered laboratory for me. The thought behind this is, uh, you can continue, I will keep on uh, talking about the philosophy of uh, remote triggered laboratory. Okay, through virtual terminal. Okay, so yeah, take this. So in that virtual uh, uh, terminal unit, when you go there, our philosophy basically is to understand and is to ensure uh, two things. One is, typically is, we all are not in a position or cannot afford high-end equipment for all the students. That's number one. It's not only cost, but it is the maintainability also. Now, whenever you are maintaining those, it takes a lot of time for us to maintain those equipment. So it becomes very, very cumbersome for all of us as a teachers to maintain those instruments. So our idea is we developed 13 uh, pilot plants, which are typically in the domain of process control and automation, sensors and everything. And these are highly automated pilot plants. So our idea is if any student from any college wanted to use this virtual lab, for example, a boiler and heat exchanger virtual lab, which uh, Amod is going to explain you, uh, where a student would be given a chance to develop a logic, right? So he will, he or she will take this and develop the logic the way Amod is developing this logic. Uh, surprisingly, most important aspect of this is this automation laboratory is already there in the virtual laboratory. That means before a student can come here and use the remote triggered laboratory, he has already practiced on a laboratory where physical instruments are not there. And that is the beauty of this. So unless and until a student has practiced and given us a confidence that yes, we can do that, then and only then we can block and we can book a slot, right? Uh, that is number one. Number two is uh, there is no point in duplicating the resources in every college. Probably we can have an understanding. For example, uh, uh, the college with which we have a nodal center like AISMS, uh, IOIT, wherein they'll say that, okay, you have developed 13 uh, pilot plants. We will develop different pilot plants and then your students will use my plants and our students can use their plants. So the utility of each and every instrument would increase. Utility of that instrument will be high because at present we are using underutilizing those high cost equipment. Then my students will start using them. So the many colleges then can, can have a consortium. And because this is a remote triggered facility, any college in the country can be part of this consortium. And then we can make a consortium saying that, yes, so let's invest on this. This investment is available with COEP. And then in lieu of that, my this investment COEP can use. Now, this arrangement would reduce drastically cost of education. And this is the need of the hour. I have already appealed the uh, authorities uh, sitting in uh, the uh, the department like department and science and technology and MHRD, I said, whenever you are giving grants or you are, whenever you are sanctioning project of high cost equipment, you have to ensure and please ensure that minimum 25% of the utilization should come through other colleges so that that facility would be available to all other networking colleges so that the students from those colleges also will not get deprived and they will use all those hard, uh, end instruments, high end instruments. And that's the philosophy behind this remote triggered level. Now, what I am um, is explaining you is he is now, uh, though we are sitting in College of Engineering Pune, we are using a different network. And those who are interested, the participants, uh, can write to us and we will give them a slot and they can use our laboratories. Right. So I'm demonstrating you how to use the laboratory. But if you really want to use this laboratory, we will be more than happy to give you access to these laboratories and let the students enjoy use of. For example, now Amod would be demonstrating you how to start the boiler 
Now, the boiler and heat exchanger which we have, I'm going to show you the uh, camera also because for each, and I, I just list the features of uh, the remote triggered laboratory. For each plant, there is one camera associated. That camera is IP based. So we give access of that camera to the student so that physically that student is not there in the laboratory, but virtually looking at the camera, he can sense what's happening there. So he can see which are the instruments, he can take the close uh, view of the instrument, he can identify the instrument, he can see how the uh, system is running. Everything can happen because of the camera. That is point number one. Point number two, all aspects related to safety are being taken care of. So even if a student wish to damage the system, he or she cannot, cannot, I can guarantee you. And I have already given a challenge to many of the students. And even if you wish, you can't damage my system because we have a three-level security to the system. And uh, the security is such that I'm not boasting about that security. But the idea is whenever we are talking about the security, that safety aspect is being taken care. And the last thing is the readings. Every 500 milliseconds, the readings of every parameter is being recorded. And at the end of the experiment, an Excel sheet is generated and it will be given to the students and the teacher also can have access to that so that you will find out whether a student has really controlled temperature or not, control level or not. If he has not done, why? So you can ask a student to analyze what's happening actually, right? That's what is the case. Now, uh, Amod would uh, demonstrate you. Uh, okay, so... Right click, uh, you want to configure? Okay, one second. Uh, I, I'll, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to demonstrate you uh, this. Okay, so I'll close this. So you want to start this? Yes. Okay, first configure. Yes, sir. Okay, so what you need to do is... Uh, start the pump. Okay, I want to start the pump. Or heater. Okay, let's start the heater. Now, physically, I'm starting the heater. Please understand. So, I'll submit that heater is on. So, AI. It is, uh, it is controlled by SCR. So, we will take the AO side SCR. Okay. So, this uh, we will call this as... Uh, now, this is the SCR based control. So, I'll give here control to SCR. So, the output, the command would be given to SCR. Uh, this we can Next, manually... Uh, we can operate the control wall. Uh, so, we can configure AO side. Okay. As control one. Okay. So I call this as uh, FCV. FCV, na? FCV1. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then I submit this. So that means I'm using a control wall. I'm operating the control wall. I'm operating the heater. Uh, we can take uh, another pump for feeding the water in the boiler. Yeah. So we can configure it as a pump 10. Okay. So I want to uh, ensure that there is water in the a tank it's p101 oh yes sir yeah so this is p101 that to take one PIAO for uh, vmt okay so now i want to regulate the uh, pump using vfd so i'll connect this okay and i will call this as uh, a pump okay good so this is what a student can do uh, vfd 101 Right. So now I'm modulating the inlet flow to the tank of the boiler. I am all also modulating the heat input through heater given to the tank. Right. So can we compile? Uh, yes, sir. We can compile. Yeah, compile. Now it will say that, yes, this is starting. Now please note in case of any violation of safety to the plant, admin will shut down the plant. This is the thread given. So if you make a mistake, if you cross the limit, the safety limit, the plant will automatically shut down. You don't have to do anything. So now we will run the plant. So now the plant is on. Yeah, so the execution started. What I can do we is... Can download the program in the PLC. Yeah, now we have to download that program. I'll just uh, click here. It is, downloaded. it is downloaded. And then we will see the mimic. Right? Now just look at this. Okay. Now... What we have done here is, this is the mimic. This is the live mimic wherein you have given a command to start this heater and to run this pump, feed pump 101. Okay. So now what I will do is, I will start the heater. 
I'm sitting here away from the plant. You can see at the back of my, uh, the plant you can see afterwards. A physical plant through camera we can show you. Now what I will do is I will start uh, the heater. Um, so this will start. So start this. Or yes. What do I do? Just toggle. Okay, one second. Okay, one second. You have to toggle this. Mm -hmm. Right. Edit. Okay. So, this is, uh, pump, uh, so can I give hundred percent? Okay. So I have given pump hundred percent. Okay. Oh, one second. Mm -hmm. This is okay. We have to toggle this. Okay. Edit. And then with this toggle, okay. 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 Just a minute, I'll just check and Yeah, can, can you hear me properly? So what I'm going to do is uh, this plant is getting run through a system and whenever we start and give a command, then this would be seen, but I can show you right. So this is the, uh, can you see this uh, IP camera? One second. Yeah. <clears throat> now, in this, this is the camera which is available to a student. And what you can do is, I, for example, I want to see the pressure, pressure gauge. And I'll say go. Okay. Now, this logic or this access 
is being given to the students so that they can see each and every equipment get the familiarity how that pressure gauge is installed what is this isolation all about all about and then they'll find out for example now i want to see a steam control wall so i'll say that yes i want to see a steam control wall this entire control you can look at this wall the entire control is being given to the students so they can find out which component is working how it is working give a command whether it is working or not so using the uh, this remote triggered facility you can even do the projects and there are there are examples from our nodal centers that they have used these facilities remotely develop their basic understanding how to use those systems and develop their projects also with their faculty colleagues and we have helped them for example uh, i i want to see the entire heat exchanger plant as such okay so i'll say that okay i want to see that boiler and heat exchanger plant so you can find out the plant will look like this okay now this access is given and then the moment the plant is on you can come to know that whether the plant is working or not how that plant is working how to connect the instruments how to use those instruments and then for example i i want to just see the heat exchanger only now if you go to the uh, theory portion of this there is a lab manual attached to that a very very comprehensive lab manual which says how to operate this plant i personally feel that we should use these systems use these systems for self learning and without any hassle without any hassle in a self learning mode if we can use that system that would help you a lot as far as the uh, learning is concerned now this pandemic has given us this covid 19 uh, i call this as an opportunity using this opportunity let's have a consortium of like minded people to change the way education system is currently working in this country why can't we do that there are lot many experiments which are going on there are lot many schools of thoughts are there of course india is a big a huge country so naturally there will be diversification and maybe diversified thoughts also based on all those diversified thought but if the objective is to make india atmanirbhar self reliant then even if objectives are different ways are different ultimately we will achieve that atmanirbharta and that's what i think we all have to strive for we all have to work on we all have to continue working on and that's the appeal now in the meantime uh, uh, amod is running that plant and i'll give you uh, a demo of that plant uh, using uh, a machine but in the meantime if you have any question if you want to uh, ask anything now please ask this uh i i just i just check a uh, few questions if i can answer for example there is a question uh, we have a background of microbiology which labs are useful uh, the labs uh, developed by amruta university right physical sciences and chemical sciences and biological uh, aspects very beautiful labs amruta university has developed so you can go to vlab.co.in and where you will find those labs and you can use those labs without any hassle in case you face any difficulty even if you are from pune even if you are from pune even if uh, your uh, location geographical location is not important because you can you can use any lab from anywhere in uh, okay i'll i'll just uh, get those questions uh i mean there is a manual for students to study practical uh, okay if you are yeah uh my suggestion because there is a query from uh a faculty member that msbt has given a manual and using that manual they are performing those experiments and if that in instrument is not working can we use virtual lab my suggestion to you is please search on 
whether that experiment is available in virtual lab. If that experiment is available, you are most welcome. Please use that experiment. If you want any help, please contact us. We are there to help you. No, absolutely no issue on that. So the procedure for becoming a nodal center is quite simple. You can simply send a message to uh, virtual as my email ID is also there. Uh, indicate your willingness to become a nodal center of a virtual lab project. You can simply become, a, uh, uh, definitely become the nodal center of the virtual lab. But what is important here is uh, we want that you should keep on contributing uh, instead of just using virtual labs. Now the question is how do I contribute? Uh, we have made uh, two provisions. We expect that you should go through the experiments and if you find that there is any lacuna <coughs> or anything needs to be <coughs> modified in that experiment, then please make sure and indicate us that is your first contribution. You can have that contribution. The other contribution can be, <coughs> the other contribution is you can become the uh, contributor for the uh, question bank which we are developing, map COs and POs, be with us and enrich the enrich the question bank which we are developing. That's possible. <clears throat> That's very much possible. Please do that. Now the question is can we develop remote triggered experiments in our laboratory? <clears throat> now the question here is <clears throat> You can certainly develop remote triggered experiments, no doubt about it, but we need to look at what type of interfaces which you have and if required those interfaces need to be merged with our interfaces and then we can collaborate and we can work together. That is very much possible. Uh, I always, uh, as a uh, member of our consortium, I always keep on saying that why, why to duplicate the efforts? Teaching community should avoid duplicating the efforts because we are not in competition. We don't have any competition as such amongst ourselves saying that who is better than who. That's not a competition. Our competition only is with the achieving excellence. There we have a competition. <clears throat> so what should happen is instead of taking pride that I have 100 crores of equipment <coughs> in bracket lying idle, we should see we have we have hundred crore equipment being utilized twelve hours a day, and these are being used by many colleges. I should I, I think we should take pride in that, <clears throat> and if need be, my suggestion is if need be, it can be made self sustainable. If somebody is not contributing in this but still want to use. Those laboratories, we know how much is the cost of the incurred uh, cost incurred by the college to run those experiments, and that could that can be done very easily. That is possible. Ways can be thought of, ways and means can be thought of to utilize these laboratories the way we wanted it to utilize. That's what I wish to say. Uh, any any other question? Because I wanted to take those questions till that time. Uh, <coughs> I come to know about uh, what's happening. Is there any issue? Uh, are you happy? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, so this is Yash Gavde, the student coordinator for this webinar. Uh, we have some questions from the YouTube chat box as well. Uh, the very first question is from Snehalata Chandrasekhar, ma'am. She is asking is difference between internet mode and intranet mode. Yeah. Uh, see, the, uh, in case of internet mode, a student is uh, in a position to use this lab anywhere, not from the campus. Anywhere, wherever he is and whenever he has got internet connection, he can use that lab, virtual lab. Intranet means within the campus. Now, what we normally do is most of the campuses are connected. Their intranet is quite strong. And when students are in the campus, they can utilize this without wasting any bandwidth or internet bandwidth. So within the campus, if you want to use it, it is intranet. That's the explanation. I hope I have answered this question. <coughs> uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. 
another question is can you list out some open source applications that can be used in developing virtual labs see as far as we are concerned we are as per uh, it's basically java javascript which we are using most of the time our databases are mongodb all these open source databases which we are using and uh, the software which we have used these two softwares mainly we have used uh, frankly speaking uh, my other colleagues from uh, uh, other colleges they have used like scilab uh, they have used as an open source uh, software uh, for the math tooling there are uh, uh, amruta university they have used uh, software for animation which is an open source software that's that these are the softwares which we have used and we insisted that it should be open source only yeah please uh, sir another question we have from shubhika ingle ma'am she is asking how the breadboard circuit implemented and check for their characteristic yeah, there is a one lab from uh, if i am correct it is from iit kharagpur uh, electronic devices and circuits lab where uh, they have this uh, type of uh, uh, lab available right <coughs> which is for the breadboard this connection through virtual connection on breadboard and connecting it and testing it also that lab is already available uh, i request that uh, who so has asked this question to please go to uh, the virtual labs portal and see that lab yeah sir we have a question from siddesh sir he is asking which virtual labs are used for information technology department and how one can access them vlab.ac.in or vlab.co.in these are the open domains wherein anybody without registration can use the lab that's first thing these labs are uh, listed under computer uh, domain all the information technology programming uh, related laboratories are listed under computer engineering domain so they can simply go to those labs and most of those labs are from triple it hyderabad all right yeah thank you sir yeah uh, we have a question from sujatha pavanikar ma'am she is asking can you please explain how did you automate documentation task with one or two example no no can, can you repeat this question <coughs> uh, sir ma'am is asking can you please explain how did you automate documentation task uh, one or two examples along with it oh okay okay see basically uh, most of the documentation is related to evaluation or assessment basically assessment means how much a student has understood i want to gauge that now there are various ways to test it now whenever now this is typically true uh, for nodal centers of coep because we have developed it and we have made this as a facility or a feature to the nodal center so if you are a nodal center uh, what is assessment there is there is a question bank which you can develop for that particular experiment now that particular experiment a student will appear for this examination no those many patterns are available so you can uh, the uh, professor can create uh, many types of uh, questions and then the assessment would be done at the back end automatically and the result will be shown to you clearing that these many cos are attained as per your criteria of course now cos are being mapped to pos so you will come to know about how the mapping is being done so ultimately you get a result saying that this lab is uh, satisfying these attainment of cos this much percentage and connection with the po is this much percentage that is part of the reporting which is available along with us to our nodal centers yeah uh, sir we have a question from sandhya aire ma'am she is asking are virtual lab as effective as hands on lab for research student um sorry uh, because see there are two things one is uh, virtual labs are to be used as complementary labs for uh, the main labs these are not uh, substitution Now, that is number one number two most of the time what happens it is impossible to keep on running those costly equipment so what we normally recommend is you run the costly equipment once or twice according to your need generate the data and using that standard data you develop the model of the system and then keep on working and whenever you find that there is a small change required that time only you come back to real lab 
till that time you can continue working on virtual labs even for research purpose that's the answer actually okay. thank you sir other question is is there any virtual lab available for plastic and polymer engineers subject yeah i i think uh, there is no direct lab available actually for plastic and polymer but let me check once uh, uh, in fact answer would be no actually but let me check once and come back to you all right all right yeah sir another question is Uh, you have created the PNID on simulator, but how can this will be helpful for instrumentation engineer? Question from Sapnil Jadhav. No, no. Can you repeat this, uh, sir? You have created the PNID on simulator, yes. but how can this help? This will be helpful for the instrumentation engineers. See, the working on PNID is the bread and butter of any instrumentation and control student. That is number one. Number two. Uh, whenever somebody is asking that in instrumentation whenever automation project is there you have to develop automation framework for that logic for that test it and check whether it is working or not now that all sorts of characterization configuration calibration and maintenance of all the process loop components is part of a virtual lab tuning of a pid controller is virtual lab plc is a virtual lab industrial automation like dcs is a virtual lab sensor and modeling is a virtual lab so almost all the domains of instrumentation are being covered under this virtual lab it's the choice of a teacher and the students to use those virtual labs actually that's the answer uh, sir we have a question from subramaniam sir he is asking how to implement virtual labs for wireless sensor net the uh, professor wants to implement that lab or he wants to use that lab a uh, use you implement that lab yeah uh, see there is one good lab from iit delhi for wireless uh, laboratories there so i request professor to look at that lab and typically for wireless sensors lab this is application side of wireless so there are two experiments on this from iit delhi let him check that and if at all if he faces any difficulty uh, please direct him to me and we will resolve that all right yeah sir we have a question from sachin kokne sir he is asking is there any virtual lab virtual lab available for digital communication yes there is a lab available it's available uh, under electronics and communication domain you will find those labs actually thank you sir uh, we have attended all the question yeah now uh, my uh, plant and uh, the remote triggered facility is ready i'll request amod just give me a second i'll just check with amod and we'll start it immediately okay yeah i have stopped sharing i have stopped sharing now amod amod would take a charge and then he will uh, Uh, take the charge and demonstrate you how to run the plant yes please amod please please continue
हेलो 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 मैं ऑडिबल ऑडिबल ओके फाइन हेलो नाउ आई एम डेमोन्स्ट्रेटिंग यू द बॉयलर एंड हीट एक्सचेंजर रिमोट ट्रिगर लैब सो आई विल बी कॉन्फिगरिंग दिस दिस ब्लॉक्स फ्रॉम दिस बॉयलर एंड हीट एक्सचेंजर डीसीएस लिम सो दिस आर द now uh, these are the blocks which i configure already uh these are the analog input and uh, analog output blocks then uh, digital input digital output blocks so there are uh, types of the uh, components which categorize under the uh, analog as well as digital so uh, the digitals are uh, like uh, on off type Uh, means uh, if suppose we can take a heater then it is it can be on or uh, either off so uh, to uh, to give the heat input uh, that is heater is controlled by the scr so we can uh, uh, attach uh, the component uh, so we can control the firing of the heater through the this component as scr likewise for the another component uh, take suppose the example of control wall if uh, we can take a example of control wall it is uh, either open from 100 uh, 0 to 100% so it is categorized under analog signal so i take this uh, in analog category so likewise for pump pump is uh, <coughs> either we can start or stop the pump but uh, for the uh, for running the pump we have to give the rpm to the pump so we attach uh, a component Uh, called as uh, bfd that is variable frequency drive so uh, now this is the configuration and uh, this program is built and then downloaded in the plc which is attached to boiler and uh, heat exchanger pilot plant we have the plc of micrologics which is provided by rockwell automation okay so uh, one ip camera that is attached to the boiler and heat exchanger pilot plant so we can see uh, various component of boiler and heat exchanger pilot plant so if you want to see the pilot plant from uh, sitting remotely then just uh, you can access or see the total pilot plant just like you are operating the uh, whole plant uh, uh, and working in a lab so we can uh, take one example how to operate the control wall so i will uh, first uh, point to the control wall then here you can see the analog output as uh, uh, that is steam control wall so i will give the uh, control wall uh, and command to open the 100% so you can see the steam moment here it will uh, it will open uh, it is now open uh, fully that is 100% now i will bring the position uh, from 100 to 0 now you can see the steam moment of the control wall it is now closed similarly you can see uh, the uh instruction here open or close once i will do uh, uh one another iteration for it again to see uh, the visibility in the uh, mimic here you can see the open command now it is fully open all the parameters are shown in the mimic 
you can uh, read them it is lt that is level transmitter then it is uh, tt means a temperature transmitter likewise here it is uh, pt1 that is pressure transmitter means uh, if you want to check the pressure of the steam generated the pressure gauge is attached to the boiler drum and uh, we can see the pressure here on the pressure transmitter so uh, to uh, measure the steam flow rate uh, here is a vortex type of flow meter so we can start now heater so for the heater i want to uh, i will uh, start this by uh, toggling then to give the heat input i will fire the heater at uh, 50% now we will check in the mimic now heater is on it is green now uh, you will see uh, slowly the temperature is increasing here uh, it is tt1 it is the temperature transmitter which is attached to the boiler drum now you can observe here and slowly the level will decrease now slowly slowly the temperature and pressure will build as uh, we have to close this uh, control valve first to build the temperature and pressure so we can close this control valve now temperature will rise uh, and pressure will also build as uh, temperature at one atmospheric pressure and 100 degree celsius the water forms the steam so uh, then uh, by uh, opening this control valve we can uh, monitor the pressure inside the boiler drum and so similarly we can we have to maintain the level in the boiler drum by uh, starting this uh, feed water pump so uh, i am starting the feed water pump now as the heater uh, having the interlock of 80% uh, the drum level should be uh, above the 80% uh, if not then heater will not start to avoid the starvation in the boiler we have to uh, build that logic so i am starting the uh, feed water pump Now you can see here it is now green now i will uh, i will show you on the mimic also i will give it to the 60% rpm so i will uh, point to that feed water pump now you can see here the uh, pump is started yeah uh, see the idea is to give you a demo it is just a demo to indicate that sitting at a remote place uh, you can switch on and switch off those systems you can run a plant and there was a question asked by uh, one faculty member how can i use it for research purpose the idea is now take an example i want to develop a controller the plant is available you can develop your controller and simply test that controller on this because these labs are also connected through opc to matlab or even you can do it in scilab also if you are open source savvy in that case what will happen you can have your own controller test it uh, using the system even if you are sitting at a remote place and all the safety related aspects as i have told you already is be are being taken care of so i just wanted to give you this demonstration uh, just to make you aware that uh, this is the facility which is available now if you have any questions 
uh, you can ask uh, i think from our side we have completed the demonstration i hope you must have enjoyed the, the session if at all you face any difficulty as far as using of virtual labs are concerned please write to us we will be more than happy to help you thank you so much uh, the organizers if you want to say something and if you have any questions please I'm ready to ask the question we'll thank ask you sir yeah. it was a very beautiful experience uh, i would now like professor mamta vandre please uh, give the vote of thanks thank you yash good afternoon to everyone i am honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks to all the dignitaries who are witness to this memorable and successful event today my words are not enough to express the gratitude on the behalf of our colleague AISSMS Institute of Information Technology I Mamta Wanzre would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr Sudhir Agarwal and Mr Datta Salaskar for giving an excellent coverage on how to conduct virtual labs I would like to take this opportunity to state on record the heart thanks to our honorable secretary and management for their support I would like to thank our very good principal, Dr. Pudi Mani, whose able guidance has always encouraged us. And heartful to our HOD, Dr. M. P. Sarde, for her valuable guidance and encouragement in all our efforts. Thanks to all the participants present here. Successful. Last but not the least. I especially thanks the people who have been the backbone of this successful event our technical coordinator professor amit kore and student coordinator mish yash gaure once again i would like to thank all the participants for your kind attention thank you now i conclude the session please fill the feedback com e certificate before you thank you once again Thank you all from College of Engineering Virtual Lab team. Okay, thank you.
those who have filled the attendance can leave feedback and attendance link are same
हेलो यश हेलो यश हेलो हेलो शुड आई एंड द इवेंट यस यस सर यस सर ओके